Chamber. And thank you for joining us for our Coffee with the Mayor series. Um, I would like to do a shout out to our sponsors and thank Catalyst Computer Technologies, Dignity Health, Chandler Regional Medical Center, SRP, Intel, and Peixoto Coffee for their continued support. If it wasn't for companies such as these and supporting these programs, um, that is so critical for what we are doing here in Chandler. So now it is my pleasure to introduce our 2020 board chair, Ms. Molly Bell from GoDaddy. Molly? Thank you, Terry. Good morning, everyone, on this brisk morning. Hopefully you're enjoying this cooler weather. I'm not quite sure I like it yet, but um, it's here. Uh, we have a great session um, planned for today. Um, Chandler Chamber board member Rick Human will be our moderator today. And we had asked for questions to be submitted in advance and immediately following the mayor's comments, um, Rick will begin with those questions. Um, and if there's additional time for questions, please provide them in the chat box and we will work with the mayor and his staff to be able to get those answers for you. Mayor Kevin Harkey began his term January 2019. He previously served nine years on the city council, first as an interim council member and then elected to consecutive terms four years. Kevin also served as vice mayor twice. Kevin is involved extensively in the state and region, serving on boards, committees with the Arizona League of Cities and Towns, Maricopa Associations of Government, Greater Phoenix Economic Council, and the Regional Public Transportation Authority. He is an ex officio on the Chandler Chamber of Commerce Board, along with serving as a public policy committee member. Kevin and his wife Lynn have been married for 37 years and have lived in Chandler since 1985. He continues to serve as pastor at the Trinity Christian Fellowship in Chandler, and he has his bachelor's degree in biochemistry and a master's in theology. Please help me in welcoming Mayor Kevin Harkey. Mayor? I'm listening for the applause. Great. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. And I, I see I need to update that. We recently celebrated our 39th anniversary. So I've got the big 4-0 coming in 2021. Well, I'm always uh, honored to be here and have the opportunity to talk to our chamber members and Chandler business community and our residents. And it's always a joy. So I, I do also want to acknowledge Inder from Senator Sinema's office, who is here with us this morning. Thank you for being here. I think the last time that we talked was probably at the Northrop Grumman ribbon cutting quite a few months ago. I also want to acknowledge our city manager, Marsha Reed, as well as some of our folks, other staff, and as well as economic development is here as, good, as well. I truly value this opportunity to get together and talk about the needs and concerns of our community. And as we move forward in this community, in this presentation, please put a question in a chat box with your email uh, included. Love to know who you are, what business you're with, so that we can treat this and continue this as a dialogue rather than just a Q&A. This is what I've loved most about these Coffee with the Mayors, which I've attended as mayor and previous ones as a council member as well. If we do run out of time, that will also give us an opportunity, as Molly mentioned, to follow up with you and, and answer your questions. This is no doubt, this has been a difficult year, and I do appreciate the partnership that we have with the Chandler businesses and the chamber to navigate these times. We've worked diligently to provide assistance and support through this pandemic. As you probably know the city has allocated over $10 million of business assistance that came to us through the AZ CARE dollars as well as some from our Chandler Industrial Development Authority as well. And currently we have three grant programs available. The first is the Choose Chandler Grant Program, which is a reimbursement program to assist small businesses with costs incurred from purchasing personal protective equipment. This is run through our Industrial Development Authority. This is in the program we've been running the longest, and we still have dollars available to help you with the reimbursement that happened early this year. So if you have receipts, please check us out and see how we can uh, help out with this. The second is a more recent addition that we added, I believe, in, in August, which is called the I Choose Chandler Business Hiring and Retention Program. This aims to keep employees on payroll as companies adjust 
to revenue losses and other disruptions caused by COVID-19. Recently, we expanded this program to all industries and businesses that utilize independent contractors as well. So we are working hard to get this money out into our community. And if you have further ideas on this, we would love to see them and see if we uh, can do this without violating uh, any laws with the state in terms of partnerships or, or financial distribution in our community. And thirdly, we uh, are involved with the Chandler Chamber in the I Choose Chandler PPE kit program. We're grateful for our partners in the chamber and I believe that a first distribution is gonna be happening this week. I, I do know from what I understand there's some back order, but we look forward to seeing what needs to happen with that as well. As of last week, over $3.4 million had been approved through the business hiring and retention program to support almost 600 businesses. At this rate, we can help well over another thousand, if not more with this program. So we look forward to continuing to engage with our Chandler businesses. And outside of our financial assistance, we continue to look for ways to support our businesses in our community. In our downtown, the Dine in the Park program continues, I should probably say resurges now that the weather is cooler. This will allow for the consumption of beer and wine in the western portion of Dr. A.J. Chandler Park across from the San Marcos and Santan Brewery area. And this program is ongoing and we're seeing more and more interest now that the weather has cooled and people are interested and able to eat outside again. We're also excited to be launching the on the street program in downtown Chandler. This program will allow businesses to utilize on street parking in front of their businesses for added capacity through the creation of patios in the on street parking. We know that with COVID there's been maximum numbers and, and of uh, ability to see as well as distancing measures that have been put in place and this will allow for both of those. And similar to the dine in the park, this program is designated to help our businesses, as I just mentioned, through COVID-19 capacity restrictions. We currently have five businesses who have indicated that they'll be utilizing this program, and we hope to hear from more soon. Applications are currently being accepted for this program. And this was a community-driven program as downtown businesses came to the city to seek to use public square and public space for their businesses. And as I mentioned, as the weather gets nicer, we expect that this program will have a positive impact, not only on the participating businesses, but the entire downtown, as it will add more vibrancy to our area. Additions, additionally, the city has eased the process through which businesses throughout the city can extend their premises on private property as well. For example, if a business wants to add a patio space in a private parking lot, the city has now waived fees, streamlined approvals, and extended the amount of time that a business can have the use of this patio. We've seen keen interest from several restaurants in this kind of activity. I do wanna give a big shout out and thanks to the Downtown Chandler Community Partnership, our certainly John Owens with the city to help develop these programs. And although 2020 has been a rough year, Chandler's diverse mix of industry has really kept the city in an excellent position with revenues coming in higher than expected. When we started the shutdown through COVID, we quit travel, we, we put on a hiring freeze to save dollars. So we were very impressed to see how strong actually Chandler came through this. And we continue to see development moving forward for example, this summer, Douglas Allren broke ground on two additional office spaces at Park Place with the potential capacity to attract 1,800 jobs. These are spec office spaces, which means that Allred, who we recently honored at the, at the Chamber Awards event, really believes in a resurgence and comeback in office as well as the continued demand for the Chandler brand for this. So we're excited to see him and other future uh, visionaries continue to invest in our city and thrive in the midst of this time and in the future. DC Heights uh, is, has started their construction on 50, 157 units. 
the added multifamily in the west of our downtown will not only add density to the downtown, but it has spurred additional development as well. The facelift of the Alexander, the former first credit building, building is almost complete with fencing coming down the first week of November. And this transformation of Class A office space has gained a lot of media attention and is attracting new tenants. Expect to see Jonathan, the Jonathan, formerly the Port America building, start its transformation within the next couple of weeks. Also in downtown, immediately west of my office, the new square completed is completed. And we're starting to see the long awaited openings of businesses like the distillery that is providing music all night long or all weekend long. <laughs> and the final new square retail space, Jinya Ramen will be open by the end of the year. We look forward to seeing the rest of this space developed in the future as well. The Stanley on the Boston Street across from Puro recently opened and is a rental through VRBO and Airbnb, complete with themed bungalow rooms, an outdoor patio, barbecue and dining, and bicycles to ride around or downtown. Future development will include an outdoor bar, event space, and potential restaurant. We continue to celebrate grand openings and ribbon cuttings throughout our entire community, although it's different with fewer people, masks, social distancing, and sometimes just virtual uh, ribbon cuttings as well. I look forward to a ribbon cutting again this next week live and possibly another. NXP recently cut the ribbon on their new gallium nitride fab in Uptown Chandler. This process invested $100 million into our community and will further their development of radio frequency technology. Intel won a contract with the US government for advanced packaging project that will bring in a lot of new infused dollars into our community. Waymo launched the first public fully driverless ride hailing service in the nation on our streets. And as an early rider with some of you, I look forward to participating in this driverless uh, ride hailing service as well. Recently, I had the honor of touring the new Banner Akatil Medical Center that will open on November 2nd. And this will provide additional healthcare options for our East Valley residents, not to mention what I call recession-proof jobs, about four or 500 that will also serve our community well. These projects and others are creating jobs for our residents, and I thank our business community for their continued investment in Chandler. Next week, I will be attending two ribbon cuttings on the same day for businesses new or expanding in our community. Maybe it's the fall weather, maybe it's the opportunity to do these outdoors again, but I think we're all excited about celebrating new businesses joining our community. We will continue to work with our business community, with our great ally, the Chandler Chamber, and other regional partners to ensure that we're addressing business needs as they evolve and work through this pandemic. Again, since we're doing this virtually, I do miss the opportunity to chat with you in person and after the event are to, are to dive deeper into your questions in a one-on-one -on -one fashion. So please, again, include your name, your company, and email in the chat box with your questions so that we have the opportunity to follow up after the event if we do run out of time. We did get a couple of questions ahead of time that I'm excited about addressing first. And I want to thank Danny Axelgod and, and Stephen Carson. I'm sorry, I've got to call you Coach Carson. That's what I've known you as for, for decades in your work at Chandler High School. So at this point, I guess I'll turn it over to our, our uh, commissioner and chamber board member, Rick Human. Thank you, Mayor, for a great update. Um, we have a few questions that were sent out ahead of time, and then I'll we'll have some time to take some more questions from our um, listeners out there. So first question, Mayor, is how is the city currently supporting the Black creatives, bringing awareness to Black American history and supporting Black businesses? Is, is City currently supporting any programs to support racial justice and equality? If so, which organizations? If not, do you plan to? Great, great questions. So as we all know, this has been a year of disruption and 
we look forward to getting back to some public celebrations and gatherings that we've done in the past. We have and continue to partner and support awareness efforts and activities with groups like the South Chandler Self-Help and Chandler Men of Action. And working with them and their leadership, we've brought forth activities such as the annual Black History Month in February uh, and associated awareness events, Martin Luther King Jr. observances in January, Juneteenth banquets, and I'm hoping in 2021 that we can resume these celebrations and get together and whether it's do uh, candlelight vigils or awareness events to make sure that we continue to celebrate these important elements in our community and, and across our nation. And as many of you know, our Chandler's Diversity Office works hard to create programs and events that embrace diverse populations in our cult and cultures in our community. They also celebrate the rich history of our different cultures and races through various events at our museums, performances at the Center of the Arts, programming at our libraries, and I, I don't know what the look of what's going to be of our cultural diversity uh, celebration that we do in January, usually around the uh, MLK weekend, but I, I look forward to seeing how we can reinvent this in a, in a COVID world. I also know that we've partnered with groups like the Chandler Film Festival, International Film Festival, that brings some, some hard hitting and conscious awareness films that have been developed by uh, people of all ethnicities and, and really hit some good hard issues. Earlier this year at a council meeting, the question was asked of how do we support black businesses? And this was when we were first discussing how could we use money given to the city in relation to COVID disruption? So I spoke to the respondent there and asked for her help to get the word out over her network of businesses owned or operated by people of color of how to take advantage of these dollars. We look forward to continuing to work with her and her organization base to see how we can partner, bring awareness and opportunities of great programs going on in our city. Our economic development team has a community outreach program where a staff member will meet with local Chandler nonprofit organizations to upgrade them on economic development programs available at the city of Chandler, like our grant programs that I mentioned earlier, the entrepreneurial services offered at Chandler Innovations and other services as well. So we work hard to ensure our programs and services are equitable and accessible. I think we can always do a, a better job of communicating and, and I'll talk about that in a, in a future question. So I think the second part of your question was, is the city currently supporting any programs that support racial justice and equity? And yes, I, I previously mentioned uh, South Chandler Self-Help, Chandler Men of Action, at an event just a few months ago in which it, we kind of did a drive-through event that highlighted the census and awareness in our South Chandler community. One of their uh, matriarchal leaders and friend of mine, LaVon Woods, thanked the city of Chandler and uh, council and myself for participating in their events. We've done so personally myself and the city for decades. Earlier this month, I met with another one of our rising leaders, a uh, former uh, ran for city council candidate, Seth Graham, to learn more about his efforts in elevating black students and scholarships and to see how can we partner with him and, and listen to his voice and, and uh, see what he is doing. I'm learning more, as I mentioned, about BASE and seeing, and Keisha Beach, seeing how we can partner. And in March of 2021, I'll be convening a two-day council retreat to discuss, build upon, and forward council priorities to our city staff. This is really important to me and, and also addressing this question because recently Chandler residents elected two new city council members who are people of color, Christine Ellis and Odie Harris. And I wanna fold in their ideas and strengths that they will bring to council and to our city as well. Next question, Rick. Okay, and I'm just reading them exactly how they came in, Mayor, so that 
what steps are you currently taking to educate yourself on racial justice and equality? Well, a couple of things. I, I recently picked up, and I'm sorry if this is coming in backwards, but uh, a book by Isabel Wilker Wilkerson called Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. And when I read a book that like that in particular, I, I both examine what's the author's premise, what are they saying, and, and if I disagree, I, I seek to search out, well, well why do I disagree? What's, what's the reason of, of, of either, is it lack of understanding? Is it just the fact that I've come from a different background? But I, I seek to be transformed and to better understand when I, when I read a book like this that, that comes from uh, different eyes and a point of view. So think of about three fourths the way through this and looking forward to finishing this as well. I've had breakfast and lunch just uh, the last couple of weeks with two of our, our other black leaders to listen and hear their heart and ideas from the community and hear what they're hearing and allow them to, to carry those forward and allow their voice and voices that they're hearing being had, heard as well. Next question. Okay, how can the city of Chandler support the involvement of black residents in the civic and political life of their community? That's another good question. Thank you for uh, asking that to Coach Carson. So in June, I issued a unity proclamation which tasks the Human Relations Commission to engage with our community and make recommendations to city council to benefit the quality of life economic development and relationships within Chandler. This uh, proclamation came about the same time with, with a virtual meeting that I had with our Human Relations Commission and to talk in light of Black Lives Matter and other things going on in our community is how can we strengthen our communication? So as a, re as a result of that, we uh, tasked our HRC, Human Relations Commission, to uh, issue forth a survey. This survey asked a lot of questions about how, where you come from, what needs do you see in our community, how do you get information from our community, how well are we communicating, et cetera. And we had over 600 people that uh, filled out this particular survey, which is really good. We're now beginning to look at this data, and, and honestly, this is brand new. Uh, I, I just heard, and we just closed this out uh, just yesterday, or last week on that, and I just heard from our city manager yesterday. So we're beginning to look at this data and explore how we can better connect with the broad and diverse cultural diversity in our community. The results will be presented to council to guide our inclusion and equity efforts moving forward. And I believe having, again, Christine Ellis and Odie Harris serve on city council next year, this is gonna bring new sensitivities and listening opportunities to further support our black residents in appointments to boards and commissions and other opportunities as well. I strongly encourage if you are a person of color, uh, a, a minority, uh, whoever in our community, and would like to involve yourself in a board or commission, reach out to me or one of our council members. We're starting probably uh, March of next year. We'll be looking at filling in the new vacancies that will come as a result of people terming out on one of our 30 or so boards and commissions across our city. Many of you might also recall that the census was a great example of how we worked with leaders of our underrepresented communities to educate and promote the taking of the census. We worked well with the group that was led by council member Mark Stewart and Sam Wong to, to reach out across our community to, to bring in leaders and their strengths and their networks to see how, how we can um, represent Chandler and get help, help them help us get new voices to the table and get everyone in Chandler counted. In 2021, I'm looking forward to launching a program called CIVIC, C-I-V-I-C, an interactive program for residents to learn more about how Chandler operates, and how to get more involved and engaged. We're gonna be working with our diversity office as well on this promotion to ensure that we're reaching our underrepresented communities. 
Okay. Next question, what is the city of Chandler doing to increase access to economic empowerment opportunities for the Latino community? And thank you, Danny Axelgod, for this question. So council, our economic development and diversity office have and continue to support and work with great organizations like the East Valley Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Chicanos por la Casa we, Council and myself, have attended uh, both of banquets from each of these. We have conversations when, whenever the East Valley uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is doing an event in Chandler, I try to attend that pre-COVID days, of course, as well as I've been, always attended their annual banquet and have an opportunity to highlight opportunities that are going on in Chandler for Latinos and others at that, as well as uh, I've attended many of their other events as well. Unfortunately, since I'm probably not going to be able to attend their Christmas banquet this year, as they're, I'm assuming they're not having it, but I've looked forward to that the last couple of years and, and sample some great tortillas and uh, tamales and other things that always come with that. I also believe that the survey that I previously mentioned will render new suggestions and connecting and aiding our minority owned businesses as well. So Danny, I hope that, I believe that I hopefully also directed answers to your question in addressing Coach Carson's questions as well. So we have a, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead, I look forward to again, hearing some other questions and again, okay. please include your name and business. Okay, this question came from Quiet Waters Maternity Spa and Wellness Center. Why does it take two plus months to get a massage establishment permit for businesses in Chandler? Our services are being restricted due to this delay and have had to turn away moms and pregnant clients. As owner, I have been cleared through federal and state background checks in minutes and days and months. I am licensed through Arizona State, have a CCW and, and a passport as well as being an honorably discharged Navy, vet, Navy veteran. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. And for the rest of your question, this is why I'm glad that we can follow up with you because I'll have to ask, I'll defer to my staff and, and see if there's any reason for a holdup or to explain anything else in the process. I, I don't know that personally, but I will make sure that staff uh, follows up with this and gets a hold of you to see uh, if, if there are a delay, what has that been? And, see what we can do to expedite that. Okay. Um, I, I have a question, I'll ask, ask this question uh, for myself. With COVID cases starting to rise and nowhere close to where we were in June, are there any plans to change any of the uh, protocols the city's doing uh, to prevent future rises in the cases? Well, as you know, we continue to um, have our mask ordinance in place. We continue to communicate and work closely with the governor's office. Next week, I'm going to be meeting with a number of mayors for lunch uh, from our surrounding cities in the East Valley to uh, hear also what they're doing and what can we do to work together. It's important that particularly in a dense region like the greater Phoenix area and even Chandler with our neighbors that we are working together with the county and others to um, implement best practices and, and hear from each other. So I'm looking forward to that luncheon next Thursday and seeing uh, also what they are seeing and hearing. I've been tracking this daily uh, over the, ever since data has been released. And I have, a, I, I've been tracking the numbers daily. I've been graphing this weekly. And you're right, we are seeing an uptick. I think yesterday was probably the highest new cases that we've seen for a month, if not probably a month and a half. Uh, I'm curious to see that the death rate continues to staying plateaued, at least at this point. What we had seen earlier was like a two week delay whenever numbers would rise. We've not seen that with the, with the slight escalation in numbers of new cases. And, but we are watching this. We, uh, we continue to see what seems to be appropriate in our community. Chandler's not seeing anything different 
then across the county. Monthly, I get a report from the Dr. Sunshine's office that rates Chandler with other cities and the overall county. Last month, we actually were doing much better from them, and I look for, to, forward to hear how we continue to do with them. Again, we're not in a vacuum. We're not an isolated city like some of our smaller ones, so it's important that we coordinate whatever we do with the governor, with the county, and with our neighboring cities as well. Um, I'll throw out another question. We have no more questions in the chat, but you guys recently had a work session on multifamily housing. Um, that was very well, very well done through MICA and stuff. Would you like to talk to the, um, the members on the call here about that work session and some of the thoughts going forward? So, as we are all painfully aware, Chandler continues to face build out and every parcel becomes really important. We don't have the raw land to have large housing tracks and we continue to look at each parcel uh, in light of our general plan that was just passed a few years ago with the regional sub plans across our community and evaluate what's the best use of, of each parcel. In today's climate, there still seems to be uh, funding loaning capacity for perhaps more than anything else, multi-housing. And we continue to work with owners and zoning attorneys and others uh, to sit, to explore what is being proposed, but also more and as much with our, with our staff and, and P&Z to see what's the best use of these remaining processes, remain, I'm sorry, remaining parcels. It's been a priority of this council, myself, previous councils, to have Chandler being a community that is not just a bedroom community. And I, I believe the last time I heard, we were at about 1.16 job per household in our community. And that number is really important, is that we want to continue to provide great jobs, offer new offerings as, as Chandler continues to be attractive as people move here. So we evaluate uh, every parcel and ask, is this a, a good place for this or would this site be better served for light industrial, for office space, for um, home use, for retail. Now something that we're really interested in when we talk retail and, and re-examining and re even housing are, are some of our areas in North Chandler. For example, the, the North East corner of Warner and Alma School where we had a Basha store there and really a, a that anchor corner has really been struggling over the last several years, particularly since BASHA pulled out. And uh, we would like to see what's available and to take some of that corner off the market and add other opportunities immediately south there under our, my predecessor, Mayor Tib Schraney, who had issued this four corner study, we took retail off of that corner and added a school. Well, that study then continues to be relevant as we look at every corner where retail exists to see is it, is it thriving, is it flagging? With the advance of online sales, or is more retail? Is, do we have the right mix of that? So we're really asking this question about retail, about housing stock, the best place to put multi-housing, where can it you, be used to uh, bring new life to existing retail? and office as opposed to replacing or competing with something that would be great space for jobs in the future. Great answer. Um, next question is from Dan Kuyper, head of, head of the school at Valley Christian. First of all, I want to thank the city of Chandler for supporting various types of education in the city of Chandler. In the past, we've supported the city by doing community service with COVID this year, that is not possible at the school. Are there other ways you feel we can support the community? Well, hi, Dan. And first, I need to issue a challenge, Dan, so I'm going to move this right here. What you see right here is some swag from uh, other Chandler <laughs> high schools. So we got Hamilton and, and uh, Chandler High, as well as CUSDs uh, with Perry and Bastia, too. 
I am painfully missing anything from Valley Christian on my shelf to celebrate Chandler. So uh, let's get together over a cup of coffee and uh, see what swag I can boast about Valley Christian as well. I know what usually would be this weekend or what would have been last weekend, an innovative program that, that Valley Christian uh, brought to us in cooperation with Forest City Chandler was um, uh, the paver program, I, I'm missing part of the words in that. What, what is Pancakes. it? Pancakes and pavers, in which Valley Christian was doing amazing things and volunteers, uh, volunteerism in terms of working with some of our nonprofits and others. And, and I do realize again that uh, while this year we had to, to put a hiatus to that and for our city day, which Valley Christian has been involved in, which we've done a lot of neighborhood renovation in areas that had been struggling and neighborhoods that needed some TLC, these opportunities will come back. And we continue to appreciate our partnership with uh, your students and others to see when we can get together and continue to participate. If there are programs and opportunities that you have that we can help highlight or partner with you, we certainly look forward to those as well as you joining in with city programs once these doors open again as opportunities prevail. So I'm just gonna to jump to Terry for a second. We've got a lot of questions on diversity uh, in our community. Terry, do you wanna to just touch real quickly? I know the chamber is doing a lot of stuff in diversity. So if you could just jump in for a second, that'd be awesome. There you go, sorry about that. Um, yes, we are. We actually are working very closely, um, uh, Tyler Conway with um, PayPal, as well as Dr. Bill Crawford um, have really been leading these efforts. This actually, we've been working in the diversity space for actually probably about the last five years. Um, it actually came to us, um, the recommendations came through our membership from our business community. And they're actually conducting, um, they too have done a survey to, out to our members. And in fact, this week and next week are, off, are conducting a series of roundtable discussion groups and um, really diving into what their survey results and providing um, and getting ready to provide educational programming on how to move forward with some of these businesses. So they're doing some amazing things um, with this. In fact, um, we have been nominated for a couple of awards for our diversity and inclusion um, series. So we're quite proud of what our business community is taking the lead on with that. So congratulations you, on those. Those sound great. Thanks, Terry. Um, well, we don't have any other questions in the chat right now. Uh, I'm going to turn this back to Molly. Um, wait, wait, I have another question that just popped up. Um, there is a feel some Sally Putnam, one of our board members. There's a feeling of unrest that may arise from the upcoming election. Can you tell us if and how Chandler is preparing for that? So We've been, I spoke with our city manager about that yesterday, and I know that myself and council have received at least a half dozen, if not a dozen emails from uh, different individuals in Chandler and many outside of Chandler that are asking that question. So as many of us know, we are seeing record breaking voting happening across our community. I think as of Last week, we had 35,000 people vote at City Hall alone. And I, I listened yesterday on NPR that we've had over a million people vote in advance across Maricopa County, 1.6 million in advance already across the state. This is as of yesterday. And um, so we know that there's a lot of people that are voting and a lot of people that will vote. I've seen a continual stream and will this day and every day until the election of people voting at City Hall. So that's good news and that's great that people are getting out and voting. Um, I am hopeful that we will not see some of the, uh, some of the interruptions that we've seen um, at, at the primary and certainly two years ago at the elections that um, uh, one election polling place not being opened, uh, the doors chained, and some other, <coughs> excuse me, 
disruptions. So we're hoping that from the county space in place that this will be smooth. And I believe that as many people vote in advance, it will certainly help that smoothness and, and preventing any um, disruptions or overwhelming at the polls. One of the things that uh, I requested of our city clerk is to really push for the um, for more polling places. At the primary, I think we only had three. And at one of those, um, it was at, at one of our places that they did not allow people to stand outside and, and outside of the 75 foot area and um, talk to people. I know for this general election, as I mentioned, I pushed other council members to make sure that we had more polling places. And I think we've got eight, eight or so, possibly 10 that are available in Chandler and that information I've, I've seen on Facebook, they're available at the city, certainly the county as well. So the first part of the question is, I hope that there are just no irregularities in the process and that there are no long lines because that certainly tends to frustrate people irritate people and an already stressful events. The second part of the question, I have talked to our city manager. We have had conversations with our, our police chief to make sure that we are aware, heightened awareness of anything that would be going on in Chandler. Um, we, if perchance there are peaceful protests that assemble, in the past we've had opportunity uh, through the community policing relationships that we've had to, to hear of these in advance and to make sure that uh, police presence is there to uh, ensure peaceful protest, protect those who are protesting peacefully, as well as make sure that um, there is no unpeaceful protest. So I hope and we're, we are gearing up and being aware of this and a heightened awareness as I, I've heard from uh, both Democrat and Republican Party folks that they're concerned that, for example, if uh, if President Biden wins, or I'm sorry, if if, uh, if candidate Biden wins, that that there would be concern of uh, from others, and I've I've heard the same that if President Trump would be reelected, that others are concerned for this. So we are ramping up awareness. We'll have an increased presence. We will stay tuned in with our partners to try to hear of anything in advance and to make sure that, again, that peaceful protest is protected, but as well as business establishments and people's personal property. So we at every community will do the best that we can do with that regard. We are hoping that this transition from after this election, whether it's the same administration or different, that people will calm down a little bit and, and be true Americans. Just one point of clarification, Mayor, the City Hall, you cannot actually vote, you can drop your ballot off. There are lots, there are several places in the city where you can actually go vote. So I just wanted to clarify that anybody tries to go down there and cast an actual ballot, they have to, it's a drop off site. So. Um, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to turn it back to Molly Bell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's always fun to be with you as we go, Mr. Harkey and Mr. Yuman. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Molly Bell. Thank you. All right, Rick, I'm actually going to jump in. Molly had to excuse herself. She had a, a phone call. Um, I just want to thank you, Rick, for um, leading the charge on that. I always love when our board members just jump in and help um, with all of these types of things. And Mayor Harkey, thank you for, the, for your time today. I do want to do a shout out. I know that you said it, but I want you to hear it from the business community is we've been very um, with Chief and how he handled all of the peaceful protests and so forth. A big shout out needs to go out to the city and city staff on that. Um, they really, um, it made Chandler proud on, on the whole handling of that. So I, I want to make sure that, that you're aware of that. Um, I'd also like to thank each and every one of you and your business owners. If you have more questions for the mayor and we're a little bit hesitant to ask, shoot us an email. We'll go ahead and get that to the mayor's staff and the mayor, and he will reach out to you directly. So we really appreciate that. Um, I also want to um, let you know, please join us on this Friday for a Zoom for our public policy series. Um, we are hearing this week from Senator Sean Bowie, Representative Germain, and Representative Epstein 
regarding ongoing efforts that affect West Chandler in LD18. And make sure that you register on the website to make sure you get that link to be able to tune in. A huge shout out to our sponsors, Catalyst Computer Technologies, Dignity Health, Chandler Regional Medical Center, SRP, Intel, Peixoto. Thanks again for joining us. And for any of your business resources that you need, please visit our website at chandlerchamber.com. So thank you for joining us and stay safe and stay healthy. So thanks again.